Pilot Topics is sponsored by AVTutorials.com. They offer interactive, easy-to-learn pilot training for Windows, Mac, and iPad. Now, let's join Steve and Russ. Welcome to Quick Pilot Topics, episode number one. I'm Steve McNeely. I'm an airline pilot, flight instructor, flight engineer, a former examiner, and I'm also an A&P mechanic. I'm joined here by my brother, Russ, and he's got some good questions today. So, Russ, fire away. Hi, everybody. So, Steve, I have questions about laser illumination at pilots. I've heard this can cause temporary or even permanent vision problems. Oh, yeah. You know, this really is a big problem for pilots, and this is something that popped up really just uh, fairly recently. So, what's being done about it? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, back in February of 2012, a public law was actually passed uh, by the government establishing a prohibition against aiming laser pointers at aircraft. There's really been a significant increase of unauthorized laser illumination at aircraft, as well as uh, a general proliferation, uh, there's a big word, and increased <laughs> uh, sophistication of laser devices that are available to the general public and other parties. So because this is kind of a problem, the FAA and other government studies show that the exposure of air crews to laser illumination can cause some pretty uh, hazardous effects. Uh, you know, we're talking about distraction, glare, afterimage, flash blindness, and even in some extreme circumstances, persistent or even permanent visual impairment. Oh, sounds like a headache. So what does a pilot do if they've been hit with a laser? It's really serious. If you're talking to ATC, pilots are requested to immediately report any incidents of unauthorized laser illumination by radio to the appropriate ATC controlling facility. And when you make your report, you should include the event position and, you know, if you can, the latitude, longitude, or maybe in relation to a ground uh, geographical feature, you know, near interstate such and such or whatever. Give, uh -huh. give them your altitude, the color of the laser beam, the originating direction, and any other information that may be necessary for ATC and law enforcement and other governmental action uh, that they can take to safeguard the safety and efficiency of the aviation operations in general. Huh. And if uh, let's, let's say also that you're flying in uncontrolled airspace and you're not talking to a controller. Uh, pilots really should immediately broadcast a general laser illumination caution on the appropriate Unicom or CTAF frequency. And this general caution should include the exact phrase, unauthorized laser illumination event. Give the time in Zulu time. Give your general position, uh, location, and altitude, and a general description of the event. It was a green laser, extremely bright, coming from such and such direction. Uh, and then, of course, once you get to your destination, it's really important that if you've been affected by an unauthorized laser illumination, definitely complete the laser beam exposure questionnaire. This is a mm. questionnaire that's on the FAA's Laser Safety Initiative website. Uh, and let, let me just give the address real quickly. It's faa.gov slash about slash initiatives slash lasers. Okay. So how do you manage a laser illumination event in flight from a physiology and operational standpoint? Uh, it really kind of depends. Uh, pilots operating IFR should obtain ATC authorization prior to deviating from their assigned clearance, if that's possible. Uh, but in the, event, in, in the event a pilot is unexpectedly exposed to laser illumination, Really, what you've got to do is avoid direct eye contact with the beam, uh, and if possible, shield your eyes to the maximum extent possible in accordance with control of, uh, controlling the airplane and maintaining general safety. You know, generally speaking, ATC understands that under these circumstances, air crews may regard the event as an in-flight emergency and may take evasive action to avoid further exposure to the laser. Uh-huh. Basically, uh, you know, as soon as possible following an incident, pilots should report it to the appropriate ATC facility and uh, forward as much information as possible. The sooner the pilot can report it, the sooner law enforcement can assist in locating the source of laser transmission and do something about it. Okay. 
So what happens to a person if they get convicted of a laser event at aircraft? Uh, I can't say that good things happen to that person. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it really depends on the situation and the legal process, of course. Uh, but uh -huh. I, I recently read this article talking about a person. I, I think this happened in the Orlando, Florida area. Uh, and this person was apparently pretty angry and displeased with air traffic passing over his house. And so he was actually aiming lasers at aircraft. Authorities uh, got a warrant. They raided his home and they found a fairly large stash of high powered professional grade lasers. Wow. The person was convicted and he's still in jail to this day. I mean, he got a very, very hefty sentence. Oh, good. So where can pilots go for more information? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really important that pilots get educated on this. And I recommend that they go to the FAA Laser Safety Initiative website, which is at faa.gov slash about slash initiatives slash lasers. So that's it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, well, I appreciate the questions, and I'm sure we'll have some good questions uh, the next time. So everybody, thanks for listening. Visit avtutorials.com for a free two hour ebook audiobook titled 12 Easy Ways Pilots Get in Trouble. Remember to listen next week and happy flying! <laughs>